Sound Design. Yeah. All right, so we took a look at our main sub phase relationship in the near field. Now let's do the same thing in the far field. So um, I've got my speaker separated here. I've still got my sub here in the ground. Now I move my main over there, and that's what happens out in the field sometimes, right? We don't get to always put our main right next to our sub. And then I've got my microphone over there farther into the room. So let me actually measure the distance offset. All right, the main is 7.8 feet. sub is 16.7. 17.8 minus 16.7. Uh, that's about 1.1 feet. And if we want to find out what the offset is in milliseconds, then we multiply that by 0 0.9 to get um, 1.1 times, it's going to be 1, right? Yeah, 1 millisecond. So, if I want to maintain the alignment that I found in the near field, I need to head over to my X32 and add um, 1 millisecond of delay to the sub. And this should actually be 2.7, right? That's what we found in the previous video. So I have my original delay here that I measured to find phase alignment in the near field, 2.7 milliseconds, and now I'm just adding one millisecond because of the distance offset for their arrival at the microphone. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is measure each of them solo and just make sure that their levels are still hitting the target trace where I want them to be. So I'll turn on my target trace here and let's measure that main solo. Wow, this looks really bad, right? <laughs> I almost have no information here in the low end. Well, what is the problem here? So, there are three potential problems for low coherence, right? Um, and the first one, I think, is really obvious, signal-noise ratio, right? When we started, we had the microphone right up next to the speakers, and now we have the microphone far away, and I've got two air conditioners on because we're experiencing a heat wave here in Minneapolis. Okay. So, can I improve the signal-noise ratio? Well, normally you wouldn't be able to do this in the field, but just here in my uh, apartment, I can turn off the two air conditioners. So let's see if that helps. All right, air conditioners off, let's try again. All right, much better, right? But I'm still not, still not getting very good coherence here in the low end. What's another way that I could improve my signal to noise ratio? Well, I could turn up the signal in the room, right? To get over the noise floor. And I don't wanna bother my neighbors too much. So as we talked about in a previous video, what I'll probably do is switch the signal generator to pseudo random noise so that I'm not listening to the entire frequency spectrum and annoying myself and my neighbors, maybe. But before I do that, um, let's make sure that I am close to the right level with my sub. Not quite. So it looks like the sub is going to need to come up a bit if we're going to get up to the target trace. And we're already at zero, so it looks like the main actually needs to come down. So here's what I'll do. I'll actually just turn up the preamp on my microphone here until I get the sub to the place where I want it. All right, there we go. So. It looks like it's a one note wonder right now, but at least we're getting up to where I want for my target trace. So I'll switch back to the main. Okay, great. So now at least I have a closer relationship to hitting my target trace between my main and my sub. So now let's talk about getting some better data here. 
Um, I know I can turn up the signal. That'll help me. Um, so let's try that first. And maybe we'll head over to the spectrum view and see how much we really need to turn it up. So first let, I'll stop talking and we'll just measure the noise floor. Okay, then we'll turn on the signal generator. And now you can see this is why we weren't getting very good measurement down there. We're not above the noise floor down below, say, 60 hertz. Now, we maybe our speaker isn't even playing that low, um, but let's turn it up and see if we can overcome the noise floor. Okay, remember how I talked about we might switch over to pseudo random noise? I think it's time to do that. Okay, it looks like we're not gonna quite get above the noise floor all the way down here, but potentially the speaker isn't even playing down there because we can see over here, well above the noise floor, okay? So and I'm gonna assume that it's doing the same, that we should be plenty above the noise floor in the sub now, let's take a look. Oh yeah. Great, so head back over the transfer function here. And now let's take a look at our main measurement. Cool, much better data, right? I mean, this is stuff that I can read. Um, let's save that and look at the sub. Cool, so some cone filtering here, right? Um, this could be from a wall, it could be from floor. And the only problem is that I would kind of like to see this data here. I would like to see the whole thing connect. So we have a pretty good, we have pretty good data here, but I think I can do even better by putting microphone on the ground and removing the floor bounds. Now that's not totally realistic because we're not gonna be laying on the ground listening to the show, but at least it will allow us to look at these phase relationships with a little bit more ease. And we're not having such a huge hard time in this tiny room where it's pretty quiet. Out in the field though, in highly reverberant spaces where you are very far from the um, speaker and therefore you're at that point just measuring reflections more than you're measuring direct sound, Using a ground plane measurement can help you um, in those kind of tough, tough, tough situations. So let's try that. And let's go back to our main. And let's add a few more averages. Let's go to two seconds of averaging, see if we can get even better coherence. Cool, let's just compare those. So here's the main I had before. Here's the, let's get rid of this for a second. Here's the main I had before. Here is now my ground plane measurement. And you can tell I just have a little bit better coherence, okay? Always in pursuit of better data. So I'll save this and I'll call it um, main solo.
And one more thing. Remember in a previous video we talked about how to unwrap this phase? Let's do that now because this is a little bit hard to read. Okay, so this might be even easier, right? So now I can just kind of look at this one line coming down here and I'm not looking at wraparounds. So I'm going to go with 40 milliseconds here in the delay. I'll stop talking for a second and recapture this. Cool, now let's take a look at the sub. Okay, now we've done a lot of work here. Um, you notice that we jumped through a lot of hoops to try and make this easier to read. Out in the field, I usually just go straight to there. I'll know that I need a uh, loud signal to over overcome, you know, poor signal to noise ratio, maybe a ground plane measurement, uh, and I'm going to need to add some delay. So these are things that we would go through quickly out in the field. All right, so let's take a look at the face here. Um, good news is, it looks like we are already aligned to this area, but I need to look at the crossover region, right? So how do I find the crossover region? Well, you remember from a previous video that we're going to offset our subtrace minus 10 dB, then plus 10 dB, so we can find the points of interaction between the main and the sub of 10 decibels. So let's go ahead and do that now. I still have my main trace selected here. I'll offset it 1, 2, 3, plus 10. So it looks like down to, let's say, 85 hertz. We have interaction, and then up to 120. So 85 to 120. Let me take a look at that. Rotate this around so it's a little easier to read. Okay. This is tricky, right? Because we are in time here, and we know we can add a little, we can, know we can um, probably add a little bit of delay and bend that down, but then we're gonna need more delay up here because we're even farther apart. This is where things start to get tricky and we have to really think about triage, right? So where are these two speakers interacting where their levels are closest? Well, they have the same level here and then through here, and then there's a greater offset down here. So let's really focus on getting this area where they're really close in level and therefore will have the most amount of interaction as close as possible. Now, we don't have a virtual time shift like we do in Sat Live and Smart, but we can just play around with this delay and see what that does to the trace. So let's experiment with adding some delay to the sub, and so inversely, if we wanna just play around with that without actually doing it in our system processor, we'll just subtract delay from the delay locator here and um, see what that does to our measurement. So we're still measuring the sub. Let's start, sub let's start um, subtracting the delay from the delay locator here and that will give us the same effect as adding delay to our sub. Oh, you know what? I just realized I was talking about the wrong trace. So I was looking at the main trace up here thinking, hey, we need to add delay to the main. So in that case, we need to go the other direction. Let's save the sub trace and then go back to the main trace and see what happens if we add delay there. So let's go back to 40 and switch over to the main. There we go. Cool. 
Cool. So this might be good. We're within 30, 45, definitely within 60 degrees here where we have the most interaction. And then down here, we start going out of alignment. So we might be able to find uh, a happy medium where we're within 60 up here and maybe still within 60 down here. Let's play with that. Cool. So I think this is probably the best we're going to get. Uh, we are within 60 degrees here and within 60 degrees down here. So we started at 40. We came down to 37.7. 40 minus 37.7 is 2.3 milliseconds. So we need to have 2.3 milliseconds of delay to the main. Uh, we're at 2.7 now. So we need to go up to five. And we'll go back to 40 on our delay locator. There we go. So we started here. Where is that? We started here with our main, we added 2.3 milliseconds of delay to the 2.7 for a total of 5 milliseconds. And we ended up here. So let's take this old one away. Okay, here's where we are now. So now let's turn them both on together and check for summation. All right, um, looks like summation here to me. We can offset this trace and see by how much. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So we're getting a full 60B of summation here and then less through here. One, two, three. So 60B of summation up here, three down here. And then after that, the sub is going to move into isolation. Okay, we went through a lot of stuff in this video. Um, really my intention with this video is to just give you a taste, uh, help you get started, help you start taking your first steps. So this is what I recommend that you do at home or in your warehouse or wherever you can get to practice. Practice measuring a main and a sub, practice combining speakers in the near field where it's easy and you have better signal noise ratio, then practice moving into the far field, dealing with the problems that come up. Uh, getting good data, um, looking at level and phase relationships, reading the graph, and then starting to see what changes you can make to make two speak speakers play better together. All right, if you have an idea for how I can improve this process, or if you have any questions, please let me know by commenting on this video. Sound design. Yeah.